Hello everyone, today I'm going to talk about the changes in the IGCSE syllabus for the Cambridge exam board. Cambridge has changed the syllabus for all three sciences, bio, chemistry and physics. And these changes are applicable for the exams starting from the year 2023. So if you're taking your exams in May, June 2023, then all of the changes I'm going to talk about right now are going to be applicable to your exams. So basically, I'm going to tell you about the things you need to study and all of the things that are no longer in the syllabus and you don't need to study anymore. You have to keep in mind that the exam itself, the structure of the exam has not been changed. So you still have the three exams, paper two, four, and six. You still have exactly the same weight for each exam, 30, 20, and 50%. But the changes are only to the materials of the exam. So if you look at the publication for Cambridge for the new syllabus, what would you notice? You would notice that the exam structure is still the same. You still have the same structure of exam, the same type of exam paper for core and extended. But if you look deeply into the content, you would notice there are many, many changes. So you have to keep in mind that the materials you have for your exam, you have the right material, you have materials that have been updated for the new syllabus. So let's keep this in mind that the exam papers are still exactly the same, but you have to be careful that you're learning the new contents for the 2023 exams. When you're preparing for your exam, if you're taking your exam in 2023, you have to make sure that you have updated exam materials. I've been updating my chemistry, IGCSE complete notes. This book has been around for almost eight years and I update it every year. But this year I've been changing a lot of materials. Let me show you what are the major changes in the chemistry syllabus for 2023. Most important change came in chapter 20. They now call this chapter air quality and climate. This chapter used to be called simply air in the old syllabus. The other chapter that has been completely changed or largely changed to be more accurate is the chapter of metals. They have basically taken away two large topics from this chapter. They've taken away the thermal decomposition and they've taken away the extraction of zinc. These two topics used to be large parts of the paper for exam. Let me show you some of the other changes in the syllabus. So we no longer have the use of radioisotopes. So we used to have the use of uranium in the production of electricity, but this has been cancelled. They've also cancelled the part about Brownian motion. So you no longer need to learn this part about the random motion of particles known as the Brownian motion. They've also cancelled the part about the hydrolysis of proteins. So you no longer need to learn about the use of acids to break down proteins. They've also cancelled everything related or carbohydrates in general. So you no longer have anything related to starch, glucose or carbohydrates in the 2023 syllabus. There are other small parts of the syllabus that's being cancelled. So they've basically cancelled the part about photography and photochemical reactions. They've cancelled the part about the sources of sulfur and the uses of sulfur dioxide. So you no need to know anything related to the uses of sulfur dioxide, like bleaching of wood pulp or being a preservative. This is no longer there. They've also cancelled the part about the testing of soil acidity. So we used to have this as part of paper six and four, where we check or test the acidity of soil to grow different crops, but we no longer have there. To summarize the changes or the things that's been removed from the syllabus, this is taken from the Cambridge publication. So you have a whole list of all of the things that's been removed. But this list is not really complete because you still have two more large topics been removed. I'm going to tell you more about this in just a moment. But before we get there, there's the carbon cycle. They have taken away the carbon cycle from the syllabus. But I would still recommend to study the carbon cycle because you still need it for other parts of the syllabus. Why do you still need to study the carbon cycle for chemistry? 2023 syllabus, you still need to learn about the carbon cycle because you still have the global warming issue as part of your syllabus. So you wouldn't really understand how the greenhouse effect is brought about without learning and understanding the carbon cycle. And it's quite simple. There isn't much 
to learn here, actually you learn a lot about the carbon cycle in other sciences, like biology, for instance. So it wouldn't harm you if you learn it because it would help you for other components of your syllabus, like the enhanced greenhouse effect. In the publication of Cambridge, they didn't mention the extraction of zinc and thermal decomposition of metal compounds, but they are no longer part of your syllabus. If you check the publication of the new syllabus, you wouldn't have a trace of the extraction of zinc or thermal decomposition. These used to be very large parts of the paper for exam. They used to come a lot in the paper for exam. So you no longer need to learn anything about these two components of the old syllabus. What are the new additions to the 2023 chemistry syllabus? Now, as I told you earlier, there is the new chapter called air quality and climate. They've also introduced a new topic called plastics, where we learn about the harmful effects of polymers and plastics, like animals getting trapped or the burning of plastic and its harmful effect on the environment. So this has all been added in this little topic of plastics. Other than this, we still have small little additions like the cooling curve. This used to come in the paper for exam, but now it's officially part of our syllabus where we have to learn about the change of the state while you're cooling down a substance from the gas state all the way to the solid state. We have a new indicator has been added, which is thymolthalin. This indicator changes its color from clear in the neutral or acidic conditions all the way to blue in alkaline conditions. I have good news for students who are taking their exams in 2023. Students in the old syllabus used to memorize a list known as the identification of ions and gases, but now with the paper six exam, this list will be provided in the exam itself. So you still have to learn it. You still need to learn how to use this list, but you no longer need to memorize all of these colors and little details about the identity. There is a little addition to the flame test part of the identification of ions. So in the old syllabus, we used to have lithium, sodium, potassium, and copper as the ions we need to identify by their flame. But now they've introduced new ions, which is calcium and barium as the parts of the new syllabus. But there isn't much here to memorize because as I told you, you'll be given the colors in the exam. So you only need to match the color of the flame given in the exam paper to the ions. So like for instance, if the ion turned out to be blue-green, then it would be copper. How do you prepare for your exam in 2023? So this year is a transition year, so you have to be careful that you're learning the new materials. Now, one of the best resources is going to be obviously the Cambridge textbook. This has been updated with all of the new materials. But the only issue here with the book is its size. It's almost 400 pages and there's a lot of extra details which are useful, but they're not going to be on your exam. So if you're interested in reading and increasing your knowledge about chemistry, it would be recommended to study from the Cambridge textbook. It has so much, so much details, actually way more details than what would you need for your exam. The other option is my textbook because I've made that textbook to be matching the mark schemes. So when you learn from my textbook, you will only be learning the information you would need for answering the exam question, nothing more. So it's quite brief. It's almost 100 pages only. And as I told you, it has every little detail you would need for the exam. So many students have used my textbook and they've succeeded with very high grades. So let me show you some sample pages. So this is the topic of redox. You have all of the definitions shown here. You also have the comparison you would need to answer the exam questions. Here's another part of the same topic. And as you can see, you have so many diagrams that would help you to learn the reactivity series, for instance, or to learn the essential knowledge to make like a comparison between an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent. You have all of these details about my textbook on my website. So if you log in to the website, I'm gonna put the link in the description. You have details about my textbook. How do you get it? 
and how to get the other resources. Because for your exam, the notes and the textbook wouldn't be enough. You still need to do a lot of practice. So I've made a book of classified exam questions for each topic, like this is organic chemistry, and I've answered all of the questions. So I've put details about the diagrams, how would you draw the different molecules, because you don't have this in the mark scheme. So like you look at the mark scheme, they would just write you text to describe how the molecule look like, but you really need a teacher to draw you the molecule. So you have this classified exam questions, and they're all answered for you.